Welcome back, warrior. We are in 2 Nephi chapter 27 today. I feel like I'm getting this weird glare right here. Hold on. Okay, so uh, just because I was thinking about the lesson um, that I had taught on Sunday, one of my sisters actually made a comment about a talk that she had heard and i've heard this talk before and i totally forgot about how awesome it is but it is a talk titled uh quit worrying about it is it the holy ghost or me by elder david a bednar and it is fantastic you like stop watching this video and go watch that one because it's amazing. I cried a couple times and it really just kind of helps you understand um, that we just got to keep moving and we don't have to s s be idle and be paralyzed in uh, decision fatigue about doing those things that we know are good and right. So go listen to Elder Bedford. And I don't mind. I won't be offended. I promise. <laughs> okay. And then you can come back here if you still want to read chapter uh, 27 of 2 Nephi. Um, because, you know, we're moving along. So here we are. Okay. Darkness and apostasy shall cover the earth in the last days. The Book of Mormon shall come forth. Three witnesses shall testify of the book. The learned man cannot read the sealed book. The Lord shall do a marvelous work and a wonder. Compare Isaiah 29. <sighs> Starting with the yawns. You know how it goes here. Okay. Here we go. Um, verses 1 to 5, and then we'll read like the commentary. Okay. But behold, in the last days, or in the days of the Gentiles, yea, behold, all the nations of the Gentiles, and also the Jews, both those who shall come upon this land and those who shall be upon other lands, yea, even upon all the lands of the earth. Behold, they will be drunken with iniquity and all manner of abominations. And when that day shall come, they shall be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and with a great noise and with storm and with tempest and with the flame of devouring fire. And all nations that fight against Zion and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. Yea, it shall be unto them even as unto a hungry man which dreameth and behold he eateth but he awaketh and his soul is empty. Or like unto a thirsty man which dreameth and behold he drinketh but he awaketh and behold he is faint and his soul hath appetite. Yea, even so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. For behold, all ye, for behold, all ye that doeth iniquity, stay yourselves and wonder. For ye shall cry out and cry, yea, ye shall be drunken, but not with wine. Ye shall stagger, but not with strong drink. For behold, the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. For behold, ye shall, ye have closed your eyes and ye have rejected the prophets and your rules or, and your rulers and the seers hath he covered because of your iniquity. So we're spiritually blind. Okay, so the commentary here says, if you notice that the chapter heading in your scriptures, this chapter can be compared to Isaiah 29. But Nephi is not quoting Isaiah word for word. He is reflecting on Isaiah's prophecies and adding his own testimony to it. Oh, I didn't quite realize that. Okay, and Nephi, so thanks for that, brought out a hostess. Nephi and Isaiah are prophesying of the great amount of iniquity that will exist in the last days. It will be like people are drunken with iniquity. And a drunk man is impossible to reason with because of his diminished ability to use proper judgment and reason. But we do not just have a drunk man or two, but all the lands of the earth drunken with iniquity. Nephi and Isaiah both teach that the nations who fight against Zion will not prevail they will not satisfy what they are trying to accomplish. They will be like a sleeping man who thinks he is eating only to awake and realize he is still hungry. <laughs> okay, wait, but like, have you had those dreams before where you like think that you are eating something and then you wake up and you're like, you like totally thought you're eating and you're starving? Yeah, 
crazy. Darby? So it's like that. Um, and <clears throat> then these drunken nations, which will be the multitude of all nations, will go after Zion only to be disappointed. Okay. Because they won't be able to prevail. Okay. Verse 6. And, uh, 6 to 11. And it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall bring forth unto you the words of a book. And they shall be words of them which have slumbered. So, a.k.a. the Nephites. And behold, the book shall be sealed. And in the book shall be revelation from God. From the beginning of the world to the ending thereof. Okay, so this is like two-thirds of the plates were sealed. Okay. Where? I don't even know why because I've gotten plenty of sleep. Wherefore, because of the things which are sealed up, the things which are sealed shall not be delivered in the day of the wickedness and abominations of the people. Wherefore, the book shall be kept from them. But the book shall be delivered unto a man, or a.k.a. Joseph Smith, and he shall deliver the words of the book, which are the words of those who have slumbered in the dust. And he shall deliver these words unto another. But the words which are sealed he shall not deliver, neither shall... He deliver the book for the book shall be sealed by the power of God and the revelation which was sealed shall be kept in the book until the own due time of the Lord that they may come forth for behold they reveal all things from the foundation of the world unto the end thereof and the day cometh that the words of the book which are which were sealed shall be read upon the housetops and they shall be read by the power of Christ, and all things shall be revealed unto the children of men, which ever have been among the children of men, and which ever will be even unto the end of the earth. Thanks. Thank you, Miss. Um, what's crazy is here it says that the, the book shall be read upon the housetops. Now, I don't know if this is the top of the house or top of our house. Um, but we do have a basement, so maybe this could be considered top of the house. Um, but I'm literally reading the words of this book in my house. <laughs> and maybe top of the house just means like, we're going to be declaring and reading the, his word, like, or the words of this book for other people to hear. Maybe that's what that imagery is supposed to be. Anyways, I think this is awesome. Okay, so you probably heard Flora asking for chores. We have a little chore chart, which she loves to play with. <laughs> it's too bad my boys don't ask to do chores. Although I guess they do ask, but only if they want something after, right? Isn't that how it always works? Okay. Um, in the day when the world is drunk with iniquity, the Book of Mormon will be brought forth. We now live in this drunken world, but we have the Book of Mormon to help us see things as they really are and avoid the consequences of sin. Imagine being born into, a, into this world without the plain and precious truths restored through the Book of Mormon. I can't even, like even just thinking about it makes me sad because of this, the power um, and the strength that I've received just from the Book of Mormon. There's no way that I could survive at all. Um, verses 6 to 11 teach about the sealed portion of the plates that will be delivered to Joseph Smith. Joseph will only translate the unsealed portion. What do we know about the sealed portion of the plates? Okay, so the sealed portion says they contain a revelation from God from the beginning to the end of the world. And then the verse 8 says, because of what is contained in the sealed portion, it will be kept from the world. Now, I think sometimes we think like, oh, I wish the sealed portion was open to me. But then just ask yourself like, okay, but do you already understand all the things that were given to us in the Book of Mormon that are not sealed? Have you read like all these pages so many times that you could like know them as if they were on the back of your hand? You know, do you know them so well that you're ready for any other further instruction slash responsibility that would come with the knowledge of other unknown things that maybe we don't know yet but that we would be now responsible for knowing because we were so curious about it no we're not ready and like 
I haven't read the Book of Mormon that many times that I could say, uh, give me more of the Book of Mormon. I mean, I love the Book of Mormon and, I, and the blessings that come from it. So I know that it's powerful. Um, and I know that whatever can, is contained in a part that I don't have will be amazing. But I need to just focus on reading the Book of Mormon over and over and over and more over and over and over again so that I can learn the things that I need to learn from it. Um, like, do I treasure those words as much as I possibly could? Probably not yet. Okay, so then the, the verse 10, the sealed, so, so the sealed portion will come forth in the Lord's due time, for sure, right? Of course, everything comes forth in the Lord's due time. Literally, we don't have things happen unless it is in the Lord's due time. Um, and then they reveal all things from the foundations, from the foundation of the world unto the end thereof. So not just the beginning, but to the end, unto the end, all the way. And then the fifth one, when the sealed portion comes forth, the words shall be read upon the housetops and they shall be read <clears throat> by the power of Christ and all things shall be revealed unto the children of men, which ever have been and which ever will be unto the end of the earth. Okay, well, I already am reading them, but maybe it'll be that much awesomer <laughs> uh, that even more people will be so excited to share the message that there, that it is or that it has. Okay, so then here are some, descri some descriptions we have of the sealed portions. Um, this is a from the New Era article. What did the golden plates look like? And this is in July 2007. It says, what there was sealed appeared, wait, what there was sealed appeared as a solid, as solid to my view as wood. About half the, about the half of the book was sealed, David Whitmer. A large portion of the leaves were sealed securely bound together that it was impossible to separate them, David Whitmer. About two thirds were sealed up and Joseph was commanded not to break the seal. That part of the record was hit up. The plates which were sealed contain an account of those things shown unto the brother of Jared. And that's from Orson Pratt. Hmm. Okay, so the plates were sealed by Moroni after he had separated from the rest of his people. He would have used materials that were readily available to him at the time. The descriptions say they were securely bound and appeared solid. The statements indicate a complete encapsulation of the plates to protect and preserve them for the future. None of the witnesses mentioned metal, mentions metal bands around the plates. This seems to be an artistic creation of the mid 20th century that has no documentary basis. Okay, but I think it's because we assume that they had to be metal, uh, end quote, sorry, not at the documentary basis, end quote. Um, we, I think, I think it's natural for us to assume that it was bound by some kind of metal uh, bands with like a lock or something, you know, but only because he, they talked about how it was sealed and they couldn't open it. Maybe it just means that they couldn't open it because the Lord told them to, and they were trying to be obedient and he was trying to be obedient. Maybe it wasn't because he couldn't physically open it, but that they just, but because of the commandment not to, he wasn't even going to try and he's just going to leave them sealed. However, they're sealed. Could have just been like, who knows? I mean, it says leaves and stuff. So could it, maybe it wasn't securely bound by any metal. Okay, you go. Um, and so it could just be that it was just something that helped keep the plates uh, sealed together or stuck together. You know, maybe it was just like a glue. Maybe if you just used water, it would have been fine because these are metal plates, right? So anyway, it's just like interesting to think about, but it's not relevant to what we need right now. Otherwise the Lord would allow us to, to read it or to see it or use it. But since it's not relevant to us now, we don't need to worry about it. Okay, and then this is from Elder Neil A. Maxwell. He's BYU speeches. <sighs> it is freezing and I'm wearing a sweater and a shirt and an undershirt. It's, it's weird. Okay, and then it says, quote, many more scriptural writings will yet come to us, including those of Enoch, 
all of the writings of the Apostle John, the records of the lost tribes of Israel, and the approximately two-thirds of the Book of Mormon plates that were sealed. Today we carry convenient quadruple combinations of the scriptures, but one day, since more scriptures are coming, we may need to pull little red wagons brimful with books. <laughs> And quote. That's so cute. I love that. Uh, I need to write this down for a second. I had to write that down because it has such great imagery. Like I want to design a little, you know, poster handout or something that has that to help us stay motivated to realize that our learning is never going to end. We're not supposed to like be done with learning. And I love the imagery of just like bringing a little wagon full of like those books that we cherish. And the Book of Mormon, of course, being the one that's most worn out and most highlighted and most loved. Um, okay, let's read verses 12 to 16. So it says, Wherefore, at that day when the book shall be delivered unto the man of whom I have spoken, the book shall be hid from the eyes of the world, that the eyes of none shall behold it, save it be that three witnesses shall behold it but by the power of God besides him to whom the book shall be delivered and they shall testify to the truth of the book and the things therein. And there is none other which shall view it save it be a few according to the will of God to bear testimony of his word unto the children of men. So we, so we see that there's going to be three witnesses and now a few witnesses means like eight, right? <laughs> And then it says, uh, verse 13, halfway through 13, For the Lord God hath said that the words of the faithful should speak as if it were from the dead. Wherefore, the Lord God will proceed to bring forth the words of the book, and in the mouth of as many witnesses as seemeth him good will he establish his word, and woe be unto him that rejecteth the word of God. But behold, we're reading till 16, right? Oh, just kidding. It's 12 to 26. My bad. Uh, okay. But behold, it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall say unto him to whom he shall deliver the book, take these words which are not sealed and deliver them to another. Um, and this is like Charles Anthon is this reference that he may show them unto the learned saying, read this, I pray thee. And the learned shall say, bring hither the book and I will read them. And now, because of the glory of the word of the world and to get gain, they will say this and not for the glory of God. And the man shall say, I cannot bring the book for it is sealed. Then shall the learned say, I cannot read it. Wherefore, it shall come to pass that the Lord God will deliver again the book and the words thereof to him that is not learned. And the man that, has, that is not learned shall say, I am not learned. <laughs> so the man that's not learned is, refer is referring to Joseph Smith. Poor guy. He always gets referenced as like not being learned. Not because we're trying to call him dumb or stupid. But I think because, I mean, I think he was very wise, obviously. He knows how to listen to the spirit and act upon his promptings. I think that's the wisest thing that any of us could do. And But I think it's because of how un formally educated he was that people uh, talk about how Joseph Smith was not formally educated and therefore um, couldn't produce certain things on his own without it actually being for real true from like the Book of Mormon and being engraved from plates and then translate that he translated and then yeah anyways so they they usually refer to that or to Joseph Smith as not learned because they want to make sure that they're pointing out the fact that it's only brought to pass because of the Lord. Like, and he does, and he does perform miracles. So I think it's to help us realize that the Lord can perform miracles through any of us, right? As long as we're willing. And receptive to the Holy Ghost. Okay. Verse 20. Then shall the Lord God say unto him, The learned shall not read them, for they have rejected them, and I am able to do mine own work. Wherefore thou shalt read the words which I shall give unto thee. 
Touch not the things which are sealed, for I will bring them forth in mine own due time. For I will show unto the children of men that I am able to do mine own work. Okay. <clears throat> he is able to do his own work. Okay. Wherefore, when thou hast read the words which, have, which I have commanded thee, and obtained the witnesses which I have promised unto thee, then shall thou seal up the book again, and hide it up unto me, that I may preserve the words which thou hast said, thou, which thou hast not read, until I shall see fit in mine own wisdom to reveal all things unto the children of men. You know, it does make me feel a little bit sad that he didn't trust us to uh, get that knowledge now. <sighs> but I can trust in the Lord knowing that he knows something that I don't know. And that is why he is preserving those things for me. Okay, um, for behold, I am God and I am a God of miracles and I will show unto the world that I am the same yesterday, today and forever. And I work not among the children of men, save it be according to their faith. And again, it shall come to pass that the Lord shall say unto him that shall, re that shall read the words that shall be delivered him. For, for as much as the people draw near unto me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Wherefore, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among the people, yea, a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom their wa for the wisdom of their wise and learned shall perish and the understanding of their prudent shall be hid. Also, I'm falling asleep. Woo, okay. Both Nephi and Isaiah are prophesying of witnesses that will see the plates of a learned man who will see the Book of Mormon characters and want to translate them. And ultimately, God having an unlearned man translate the Nephi plates, which will then bring forth a marvelous work. This is all history to us now. And we can explain how these prophecies came to pass with names, dates, and details, right? Because we have the, because we already read like the preface, or we read the, what am I talking about? Linda. We read the beginning where it has uh, this account from Mormon, but then we also have, well, we have the introduction, but then we have the three testimony of the three witnesses and then the testimony of the eight witnesses and then Joseph Smith's testimony. So we have all of those testimonies, like they said, right? Um, and we know that Oliver Cowdery, Martin Harris, and David Whitmer were the three witnesses to the plates, and there were a few. Hmm few more, aka eight, that included the eight witnesses. We know that before Joseph, uh, well, I guess there are extra witnesses even um, that we know, but they didn't include their testimony to the Mormon. Um, we know that before Joseph translated the plates, he copied some of the characters from the plates and Martin Harris took them to a professor, Charles Anthon, who verified that the characters were real. Um, and you can see this in Joseph Smith history, 164 to 65 for that story. And the Lord could have used an Egyptian language expert to translate the plates. But he didn't. He used an unlearned man with very little education and said unto Joseph, I'm not able to do mine own work. And his work will be a marvelous work. Or he said, I'm so crazy. Hold on. It's because my eye. Okay, he says, he used an unlearned man with very little education and said unto Joseph, I am able to do mine own work and his work will be a marvelous work. So there's that because the Lord can perform miracles in the lives of those who love him, right? And who want to be part of his work. Okay. And it's our choice. We get to choose if we want to be part of the work. Um, okay. And woe. So verse 27 now, and woe, meaning great grief, sorrow, misery, unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us, and who knoweth us? And they also say, surely your turning of the things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. But behold, I will show unto them, saith the Lord of hosts, that I, I know all their works. For shall the works say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? So it's like, we give ourselves away in the type of work that we do, whether it is righteous or unrighteous. 
I think we kind of have that signature mark, right? Um, I was going to liken it to like when, when you watch those movies of like serial killers and stuff, they always have like the serial killers that have their special mark that they give. Well, I don't really watch shows with serial killers, but when I did way back in the day, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I must've watched a couple cause that's where I'm getting these ideas. But what's really sad is the fact that like, I don't, well, I guess it is sad that they make those movies now so so gory and stuff. I just couldn't handle it, so I don't I don't watch those anymore. Strictly, uh, happy endings, princesses, romantic comedies for me. Okay, <laughs> some superhero movies because I do like them, but but even then, it's still like oh with the violence. I can't. Anyway, um. Okay, but behold, I will show unto them, the, saith the Lord of hosts, that I know all their works. Oh yeah, so he was saying like he knows. Um, but behold, uh, verse 28, but behold, saith the Lord of hosts, I will show unto the children of men that it is yet a very little while and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness and the meek also shall increase and the joy shall be in the Lord and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For assuredly as the Lord liveth, they shall see that the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. And they, they that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax, wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to, under, to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. Mm. Love it. Okay, so then we have some commentary, of course. Okay, so this is a woe or a warning to the, in verse 27. Those who think they can have secret sins or hidden works, right? Who say to themselves, who seeth us and who knoweth us. Isaiah used the, the imagery of potter's clay to describe how the people were viewing God. For shall the work say of him that made it? he made me not or in other words they were in charge not their maker uh, in, or in other words they were in charge not their maker this would be a this would be likely a pot taking the credit rather than honoring than honoring the potter they who were they were denying their relationship with their relationship to God their maker who seeth us and who knoweth us is what they said in their mind, the answer should be no one, but the real answer is God knows and God sees us. In verses 28 to 35, it says, this is why the restoration of the gospel is truly a marvelous work. The change that happens in the lives, in, the, in lives, hearts, and homes is truly marvelous. The forest or cedars of Lebanon are used in Isaiah to describe the proud and lofty in the world but the gospel will change hearts and there will be fruitful fields. Do you relate to this? How much more fruitful is your life because of the covenants you have made? Mm, so fruitful. The Book of Mormon will allow people to spiritually hear and see. They will find joy in the Lord. Express how Israel will, not, will no longer be ashamed or wax pale. Which it which is an expression of the being of being embarrassed. Those who have not had the truth will come to understanding. They will they will learn doctrine. Okay. Okay. Uh, quote from Elder Bruce R. McConkie says: Members of false churches who err in spirit, who think that they have the truth, are brought by the Book of Mormon. To the fullness of the gospel, those who have based their beliefs on isolated verses and obscure passages and who have wondered 
and murmured to, at seemingly biblical conflicts, come to learn sound doctrine. No longer do they worry about the atonement, salvation by grace alone. Infant baptism, the priesthood, the gifts of the spirit, the passages about an apostasy, a gospel restoration, and the gathering of Israel. All things fall into place because of this new witness for Christ and his gospel, end quote. Elder Bruce Samarkanki, the millennial Messiah. Okay, I love that. But we do need to remember that we can't approach people and tell them that they're wrong. Like, we, we tell them that we, we are going to add upon their faith, right? Uh, at least that's what um, <clears throat> I've, like, learned from all these talks that have been given at conferences. Like, you can't just be combative against uh, or with those who are of other faiths. We want to be loving and kind to our brothers and sisters and see how see what they believe and how they believe in God. I really like how, um, who was it? Was it Ammon with King Lamoni? Um, and how he was like, hey, do you believe in God? And how he took him through that whole process. Um, and I love that. I think that's like the perfect example of like what a missionary needs to do. And what we need to do as members when we are talking about our faith with uh, friends of other faiths. So anyways, I love that. Okay, and then we have our read it, live it, and then we will be done for today. Okay, so it says, the Lord manifests himself unto all those who, just kidding, this is verse 26. This is uh, from chapter 26. We already read that one. Did we? Maybe we did. Maybe I don't think we did do that one, actually. Okay, verse 20. Okay, chapter 27. Here we go. <laughs> we got this. Okay, read a little bit. In the last days, there will be people in a spiritual slumber. They will close their eyes and reject their prophets. And the, the antidote will be a sealed book brought forth from the ground, translated by a man with the power of Christ. And it will have three witnesses. Read the book is what is what it says here. Um, I love that because that's what we're doing. We're reading the book one day at a time, one verse at a time. And we're not rushing through it. We're just taking our time. We're trying to hope that as we take our time, the spirit will testify to us of the truthfulness of the things that we are reading. Okay. Uh, until tomorrow, stay strong, warrior.